Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Are you guys able to hear me? I am, yep. Oh, thanks. Okay, um, I'm still missing my co-chair. Let me ping him, so give me a minute. Okay, uh, we are already four minutes past the hour. Uh, so while we, I wait for Kent to join, let's get started with the uh, administrative stuff. Uh, so this is the interim uh, meeting for NetCount Working Group. It's a two hour session. We have to follow pretty much the same guidelines we do for the regular that got meetings, so the note well applies in this case. Uh, so uh, I'm sure you guys are aware of it, but in case you're not, here are a list of VCPs you can go through. Um, same applies for the code of conduct. Um, we strive for mutual respect and dignity for all. Now to the administrative stuff, you guys are already logged in, but in case um, someone is looking for it, this is the link for it. Um, pretty much everything else remains the same as a regular meeting. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a two hour slot. Um, we will of course follow the queue in the meet echo for folks to be able to speak and do rem uh, remember to remove yourself from the queue once you're done. Uh, we do encourage you to participate by also taking, uh, contributing to the minutes and there's a link to uh, the notes. Let me just see if I can cut and paste that in the chat window in a minute. Okay, the agenda for today is to go over uh, the RESCONF and next, uh, RESCONF next and NETCONF next. We started a bit of the discussion in ITF 118 in a side meeting, and PER is leading the effort in that. So, uh, thank you, Sam, for posting the link to the notes. So, at this point, I am going to hand it over to uh, Per to kind of lead the discussion. Primarily, I think we want to, Per, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we want to try to classify issues based on whether that this is um, what's the importance on them, and then maybe also try to address the question of whether the issue requires a protocol change or can it be done with the existing protocol? But I'll let you at this point take over. Yes, uh, uh, finally found the unmute button. Um, 
Yeah, so the idea is to uh, go through exactly what uh, Mahesh said. Uh, can you all hear me? We can. Great, thanks. Um, so uh, we started this in in um, in ITF in in Prague. Uh, started looking through uh, some people uh, also uh, reported more issues, um, and uh, I I guess what we would like to aim for is to classify what can be done now, who's interested in doing that work, uh, and just also close issues that are already fixed or ongoing. Um, and uh, I could uh, start by sharing my screen. Hopefully that works. I'm sure though. Or does anyone just, else have any other suggestion for how to? Just to say that Annie looks like he's in the queue for asking a question. Yes, go ahead. I um yeah I missed the the side meeting obviously, but wouldn't the point of NetConf next next be a new protocol version? So so it's it's kind of like the, the discussion focuses on what the next protocol version would have in it if it's just some little add-on thing like the you know ad hoc approach that the working group's been taking for the last 10 years then it doesn't really need a new protocol version and it doesn't need netconf next it, you could just make a proposal and do it um so the whole point of of another protocol version would be fixing things like the lack of warnings, the lack of uh, JSON or CBOR, um, those re require, uh, I think, a new protocol version uh, and would be worth doing. <clears throat> you know, so I thought the discussion is about what the next protocol version would be. Uh, I guess there's a, a discussion before that to, to um, prune things that don't need to be uh, done with, with a protocol change, I guess. Is that correct? I think that's a fair uh, understanding of what uh, what I am thinking. Okay. Right. So, Andy, to reiterate what Per said, the idea is to go through the issues that have been logged into the GitHub to determine whether they are indeed uh, they whether they do require protocol change or is it something that can be done today without actually upgrading so once we kind of classify the issues and given them a level of importance or uh, priority then we can go ahead and actually ask for who wants to work on that Do you want to go ahead and share? Yes, yes. Um, let's see if this uh, works. Can you actually see? Oh, uh, no. Not as okay. yet. No, let's try if we can share the entire screen instead. Okay. Now you can see. Now we see your screen, including your. Yes. So uh, I have. Uh, I can obviously not. Uh, uh, can obviously not uh, uh, write any. This was really annoying. So we'll do it this way instead. So um, I cannot take the um, take notes at the same time. So uh, feel free to do that. Otherwise, I guess most of the 
uh, interesting uh, minutes will be in the actual tickets. And uh, I suggest we just start at the bottom and uh, go through them one by one. I think some are quick and we can just see if they, uh, three things, if they can be closed because there's already ongoing work, uh, if they require a new protocol version or if they do not require a new protocol version. I don't know if we have labels for it. Sorry. Uh, no, so we don't have can, any. Can you make labels. the font large enough that it actually uses the full screen? Because I cannot read anything. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Uh, so do we have something here? No. So we need a label for uh, need next, maybe. So this is what we will use. Either close them, uh, don't touch them, or uh, tag them with uh, need next. Is that OK? Yeah. So silence is consent, as you all know, after the many, many video meetings in the pandemic. So um, this is enhancements to work with the lists and lists, lists in RESTConf. I would say that this is ongoing in the list pagination and can just be closed. OK, so I'll just close it. Sure. Great, on to the next one. So correct error tag value in response mode for data resource existing case two. I would say that this should not be done in the issue tracker maybe, but in the errata. And there's already Or this actually needs next them, maybe. Uh, so I'm just trying to find the right, as I'm swapping between windows. Yes, so it looks to me, the comment on, on the right is that the, it's beyond the scope of what an errata can do. So I think we should need to fix this. So I think this is just something that gets done in the next version of uh, RESTConf. Okay without any specific issue. So it needs a new protocol version. Rob. Uh, needs a new RFC. So I think, I think the answer to that is probably yes. Um, okay, but um, so should the aim be to to fix this uh, bolt it on the existing version of RESTConf or spin a new version or fix it in a new version of RESTConf? Uh, Andy, you want to comment on this first? Um, isn't it implied that any accepted or verified errata is part of the next version? It's, it doesn't seem to be a procedural issue. I, I haven't checked the errata. Was the errata accepted? Or was it hard for document updates? Um, just from an overall uh, perspective, it's really confusing to to users to have a real piecemeal approach to the protocol. So, so when changes like this are are made, it's actually easier on on them to just have a new protocol version, and now something that was told we we're told to do a different way now it's totally different and we're doing it another way um i i prefer to have 
that done in a new protocol version, especially something like uh, returning errors that we said it's a certain way and now we're changing it. But uh, I think it's, it should be clear if it's an accepted uh, errata then, <clears throat> uh, or if it was hold for document update, then, then yeah, it should be part of the document to work out later. But um, I wasn't aware of, of this, uh, this issue, but it sounds like it needs correction in the, if in fact it, everyone agrees that the, the, the new error is better. So I think this is, this changes resource denied to data exists here, right? But it would break clients, of course. So let's say that it needs a new protocol then. Okay. Moving along. Uh, restructure the uh, rest of error messages. Uh, in short, uh, to better um, be better tailored for HTTP uh, and the error handling there and error reporting instead of uh, basically just copying netconf. Uh, I would say it very much needs a new protocol version. Okay. So I, I should know this, but I don't. But I think this might be changed in list pagination. Um, but I don't know on the top of my on top of my head. Does it? I okay. Don't remember. Yeah. Andy, you would have an opinion. Uh, I, I, this appears to be uh, a request to treat um, lists and leaf lists as uh, as a collection. So in, right now, you you have to specify a specific um, instance. You can't supposedly access. Uh, just the entire list. Um, that would require a protocol change because the, the text says something about if it's a list, then the equal sign and you know a list with keys must have the keys specified in the URI. So that would definitely be a uh, that would be a soft uh, change because if a compliant, uh, you know, client isn't going to do that, right? So the ones that are absolutely no way am I going to support are where you take away something that already worked and then a bunch of customers are going to file reports, bug reports, because all their regression tests start failing. Okay, they're not going to really support that. <laughs> but adding new things and, and adding stuff to the errors, uh, not redoing all the errors, just adding more stuff to what's already there is, is great for a new version. So support that. But this looks like, uh, you know, interesting to do, but uh, needs new version. So what is added in list pagination is the Yang Data XML list. Uh, which uh, makes a collection then and wraps the entire XML document in a top node.
So. Uh, well, I, I think this this is uh, it seems to be a request to uh, access the you know the resource URL as um, uh, see what the, the URI could address the list itself with just playlist instead of having to specify the keys. So that requires a protocol change. It, it, it seems like it could be interoperable and, you know, if it makes sense for the operation, I don't know. So Bert, yeah, this... I, I probably add it as uh, needs a new protocol version, to, unless you can verify it. I mean, so... it's in section 2.2 .2 in the uh, uh, list pagination rest contract. So it's very much, uh, 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 in in those uh, ongoing work. Okay, so you're saying you're able to do it without actually changing the protocol. Uh, well, you you change the protocol for uh, so if you support that RFC, right? You have a bolted on support for XML list, uh, so making list and leaf list as uh, data resources. But but. You wouldn't do that with the URA because then you'd be violating a must in RFC 8040, and you wouldn't want to do that. So you can't be doing it in the target URI because uh, that requires the keys. That's what this this ticket's about. Um, so so the RESTConf protocol has already defined how a list is encoded, and this request is to let it let there be a different encoding as well yes <clears throat> okay I, I uh uh i wouldn't be in favor of like another rfc if you support that one then you support breaking rfc 8040 i guess so, so i guess the it, itf is a different view of of must uh requirements now I think what Andy is, is saying here makes sense that I think this is requires a new protocol version, but you could do it in a minor update as it doesn't require a major change or breaking change. It might be worth when we flagging these to flag which ones would require like a breaking change to rest comp from which ones are just additions or minor updates and ignoring bug fixes. Okay. So are we satisfied with uh, Mahesh's uh, comment here? I mean, this is needs more investigation, probably. <laughs> Three, two, one, yes. Um, so this is similar, but uh, this changes things up a bit. But for JSON, to change the encoding of uh when you um for list items right so even if you address one list uh item element you will get it uh, enclosed in in uh, list uh, uh brackets and then the element in braces but instead, you sh it should be in braces only. Uh, Martin has a comment that this follows from RFC 7951. Great, Andy. I guess, Andy, you're in the queue, right? Uh, oh, hello. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah I, I'm not uh, supporting changing RFC uh, 7951. Uh, and, and it would have two different ways of, of encoding a list. Uh, um, it's actually, it also doesn't support streaming. In a streaming server, you don't know if there's going to be any entries, let alone know how many. So 
you have to just start the array. So we're going to continue to do that. And it seems like a uh, any change that allows flexibility without value, I you know, know why we'd want to do it. Is, uh, is this, all right, uh, not supporting. So anyway, this would need a new protocol version, right? Not for a minor update. That's correct. And there are, of course, additional suggestions uh, from, uh, from Martin also, right? That this could be returning just the list entry itself. Uh, yes. So, really. Yes, so not wrapped in the uh, list uh, name, etc. Yeah, so the question of whether we adopt it is something we can take up and after we have classified the issue. Yeah. But it very much needs a, a new protocol version anyway. It would break everything too. Um... I was just going to make a comment on that one, just uh, look into it. So I think it's a question for Andy here. It is, um, it looks like potentially you could allow server to return either encoding. So that would be one option. Would That would force clients to, to understand both of them. So that would meet your streaming requirement. I, I'm not sure this is a good thing to do or not. Um, I'm just trying to figure out if that's an option, plausible option or not. No, I'm, I'm not I'm not in favor of this change at all. I don't, I don't uh, want the client to have to guess what's going to get returned. I, I don't see the value. You save two characters. So what? Um, you know, so... I'd, I'd rather have the client be consistent. I think the, the, our, this particular working group is, has been consistently server-centric, and it would be a good idea to stop doing that. Okay. Okay. So enable to put to move a list entry without needing to supply the entries contents would be uh, uh, it would be uh, convenient right i would say this needs a new protocol version agree Disagreeing opinions? No. No. Okay. Uh, and replace the rest of Yang data with uh, uh, the Yang data structure extension instead. Uh, makes the protocol more uh, self-contained, I guess, because Yang data is used in several other places, um, you know, because it exists, but uh, maybe not so um, well formed. Would need a new protocol version. Hickory. So um, I need to um, take care of a family matter at home. I'll be back in one minute. <laughs> Sorry. Right. And so while Per is stepped away, let me see if I can take up the next item. Uh, HTTP3, quick paste, or HTTP2 as a transport. I think this Hi, question. 
really yeah. sorry. Uh, yes, so this is your uh, ticket, um, Mahesh. Yes, so uh, as I was saying when you stepped away is that um, I think this question came up in a different draft also. Uh, there's nothing to say that, uh, of course, uh, we cannot support HTTP3. Currently, I guess uh, we haven't had, uh, well, we have a draft that was uh, proposed in the quick working group to try to support net uh, netcom or it's quick but uh, i don't know what work or if this would actually require a new protocol i, I was just going to quickly comment on this one so uh, as i perceive it the the potential key benefits of quick for a uh, netconf or resconf is that it allows separate streams to have separate flow control so if you're doing something like streaming telemetry across a quick connection, you can stream uh, multiple separate streams. And if one of them blocks, it doesn't block the rest of them. So that's that's what I perceive is the main advantage. It allows streams to be handled more cleanly rather than having separate um, HTTP connections to achieve the same thing. So that's the benefit. Uh, the downside is it, it has to be encrypted, which um, you, you can't sort of have no encryption with it. Uh, and it's presumably quite a lot of work, although there are quite a few standard um, quick protocol stats, stack implementations around, I think, not standard, I mean, probably open source ones. So um, so I think it's definitely one that's worth considering. It's not necessarily obvious to me we want to do this, but it'd be worth talking about. Right how, how that's would quite it, a I don't know how I'm in the queue, but uh, oh, I can't see. Can I speak? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, is there any major benefit using Quick instead of using, for instance, UDP Notif with flow control? You'd basically solve the same problem, right? Um, I would have thought the advantage of Quick over UDP is that you can you get fragmentation for free. So, whereas oh. UDP Notif it would force you to fragment the packets probably mm. less efficiently. I think if you're using Quick, you would fragment them better, but I, I don't know for sure that's the case. Okay. Other than the benefit per the question is, of course, that you're trying to answer is, does it require a protocol change? Sure. I don't, I don't know if it does. They're, I mean, H2 and H3 are pretty, aren't they pretty transparent? I don't think it requires a protocol change, except if you wanted to make use of quick streams. Oh. So that was, that's the, and again, you can make use of those streams in HTTP2 as well. I think it's the mm. same for both of them. You don't really get the benefits without quick. Yeah, you have the head of line blocking still in H2, right? Yes. Which you don't have in at all in H3. And the other the other advantage for uh, HTTP three is that you can uh, get quicker startup. Effectively, you can make a request on the first packet if you've re if it's mm. previously been open. I'm not sure that that matters for the where, for where netconf and restconf is used. I, I can't think that that's that important, but might be mistaken. So if we put it like this, the comment side doesn't need new protocol except for streams and then label it as need next anyway. Sure. Or like this maybe is more clear. Like that, okay. Uh, let's continue. We are here uh, deprecating or obsoleting the combined data store resource, and I guess use the NMDA data stores instead. Uh, I'm trying to remember. 
why I open this. Combine. Uh, so I can I could probably also comment on this one. So isn't this the fact that within NDA we move towards an architecture where the data stores are far more visible, and so you have a separate operational, um, separate running, separate candidate config where you already had a separate candidate, but we added in I can't remember what the RFC number is. Uh, the rest conf operations allowed you to uh, target those data stores directly, and hence I think the question is whether we need to retain. The existing net confirm me mechanism of having this combined data store view or not, or whether you had a future version of uh, rest conf, you could potentially either deprecate it or obsolete it, depending on whether it's a minor or a major version, new version of net conf, uh, sorry, rest conf. And Andy's going to comment on this as well. Okay, um, so this, sorry, Andy, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that. Uh, in, in like 10 years, we've had one request to implement RFC 8527. We're, we're finally doing it. Um, there's no way you could take away the uh, existing combined data store with RESTConf data. I mean, to what what is what problem does that solve? I guess what I, I would ask, and, and it's just going to absolutely break everything. I think 95% of of uh, the usage of our stuff is non-NMDA, okay? And the only thing people like about NMDA is getting the operational value of config equals true. That's that's why they would do it. So uh, keeping that in mind, it's great, add this, but I don't see why we take away anything that that's used by 95% of the, um, you know, users out there is there a use case for taking away uh, the stuff that uh, that's there I, I guess if you want to make force everyone to do an mda then that's the use case uh, like, but i don't know it just doesn't seem necessary hi uh, uh, kent as a contributor I think the use case is really why we did NMDA in the first place. Um, certainly getting the operational value of config equals true, but also um, there's the we're having to create state modules you know, as a transition strategy. Um, all the Yang modules have to have state modules for uh, representing state data for legacy or non-MDA servers. And it's a little bit of a, um, a technical debt that we're carrying forward. And I think the idea is to, at some point, we can let go and we no longer have to maintain and support those state modules. Super for now, at least classified as a protocol change required. And then we can take it up on the question of whether we want to pursue it or not. And it was, what, 85.27? And you seem to have the number in, in the cache. REST conf extensions to support NMD 85.27, yes. Okay, so we're now at the exclude query parameter. Um, some discussion, but to add uh, uh, negated fields um, query parameter. This has been discussed on list as well. Um, with um, seemingly negative uh, um, opinions about it. Jan, you wrote something in the comments. Maybe you might want to add to why you think it's not problematic. All right. So uh, service tend to evolve and add new functionality. And they, they may be nice and add it in a sort of backwards compatible way. But if clients have this exclude feature, 
they will sometimes be surprised that new data that they didn't expect will arrive because they didn't exclude something they didn't know would arrive in the future. So I don't think this is a very smart approach, neither for the clients and not for our, for us as standard body. So I would, I would motion to close it. Yes, so should we close this then? Um, certainly mark it for close week and then if we, unless we get here back from the original all service. In, okay. Uh, um. Okay. Yeah, it tells me yes is better because Chade is not is in China is not able to join this call. So maybe in one of the interim meeting, uh, yes. which is more friendly to China, it'd be better yeah, to yeah. have him able to defend uh, his position. <laughs> uh, interim meeting, yes, exactly. So let's type it out this way. Thanks. Um, we're now here. So I wrote this. Uh, I don't know how uh, useful it, uh, it is um, to have keep alives in the protocol. Um, if no one else thinks it's needed, we can just close it. I thought it could be neat to, uh, for instance, for um, to keep um, connections open for, for instance, for long running subscriptions. Um, Go ahead, Andy. Uh, um, yeah, th this is a, a detail in, in RESTConf that, that could use some work. Uh, there's always problems configuring um, Nginx or Apache to to handle SSE correctly, especially uh, they don't seem to flush the data very well, and then they also time out uh, and, and these kind of problems. So, so it is an actual problem with the protocol that needs fixing and requires a new version. I guess I'm next in queue. Um, <clears throat> I was just going to say that the client server drafts do uh, enable the configuration of keep alive. And in general, it's the uh, up to the initiator of the connection to maintain the upness of the connection. So, uh, you know, it's primarily needed for a call home for, you know, if the server is going to initiate the connection, the server has to actively. Um, test the aliveness of the North Mountain clients and, um, you know, fail over to an, an, another server if, or client if necessary. Um, but it certainly is the case that clients can themselves already today um, do keep alives, both NetConf and RESTConf, to, you know, NetConf and RESTConf servers, um, either using SSH or TLS. It, there, there's no new protocol <laughs> that needs, I mean, maybe it's a question of what layer, right? So both SSH and TLS are on top of TCP. There are TCP uh, keep lives, but no one suggests using them because they're not encrypted. Um, so then you go into SSH and TLS, you can do keep lives at, the, at, that, at those layers, uh, which is great because they're encrypted. Um, I mean, and it's sufficient for our needs, but if necessary, we could even do keep lives at the NetConf, RESTConf layer protocol layer. Uh, maybe that's what Andy was su suggesting, but I don't know if that's needed. Well, if the, 
Uh, the client uh, initiates the SSE, which it has to do. The, uh, the, it doesn't send anything, it, so you, and it and it isn't ex, the server isn't expecting anything on that connection. It's the server that's just sending SSE, and it, uh, so I think it would require some sort of change, so that the 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 server knows to send these and the client knows to expect them. And they would be application layer pings. Your SSC, sorry, your SSC is um, on top of TLS, right? Uh, it's, um, HTTP uh, on top of TLS, uh, but it's uh, like, right. I don't really want a, a tr like a transport specific solution. Okay. Uh, and. All right, yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, certainly it could be TLS uh, support to keep it live, so you could do it at that transfer layer, but, okay. And I think it now can be handled somewhat with uh, configuration options in that are specific to the servers, like Nginx. So, so I, you know, I don't think it's a must have, but it, it certainly uh, could help some, some issues with SSE. And now there's a whole other thing that's replacing SSE, I guess. So uh, uh, I don't know, you know, what the future of that is. You're referring to UDP, I'm oh, sorry, HTTP notice? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is the overall consensus that this is not something ResConf can address? I mean, how, how would it work with uh, going uh, through proxies and stuff like this, where you might uh, terminate TLS? I mean, if you have a, a RESTCOM server behind a TLS terminator gateway, whatever, and then a client on the other side, the TLS keep alive would not help there. You would have to have a RESTCOMF specific keep alive for the entire chain, right? Yes, that's a good point. Um, I mean, and we say it's a RESTConf um, protocol fix, but I, I think it's more of SSE fix. We'd, we'd have to introduce a dummy message. Like, server has to send a dummy message at least once a minute or something like that. Yeah, there already is the, if you send with uh, only a leading colon, uh, it will uh, uh, effectively be a comment in the stream. And the uh, server just uh, returns, echoes back, whatever. It's a, like a ping, basically. Uh, or echo. Um, so so in then, some sense, it already exists. Yeah, that was about to say. This doesn't need next. Uh, we could update eighty forty, make that recommendation if we wanted to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're at XPath filter and uh, uh, which so today uh, restconf only has the fields query parameter to uh, to select nodes that you want uh, in, to do a select in your in your um, uh, get config basically um, but it would be neat to uh, be able to have an next path filter instead more powerful an example would be this then. And more interestingly would be to have the, uh, if you bear with me, uh, it in uh, an HTTP query method, which is uh, uh, currently standardized in uh, the HTTP working group, where you uh, have basically a get query with a payload. So then you would not need to escape uh, the XPath query and the query parameter and URL and code and so on and so on.
Uh, I don't think this would need a new protocol versions to um, be usable, backwards compatible. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, well, this is already supported with uh, like the netconf operations through restconf. Uh, and, and this X path isn't complete because there's no extended names. And so there's no XML NS namespace bindings, thank goodness. So, um, so I, I think there's a, a doing it in the payload sounds fine. There's already a way to do that. Uh, suppose there could be more, but there already is a way to do this. How do you do this in? How do you do this in RESTConf today? The, there's something called the operation uh, resource, so you can invoke the get operation or get data from from RESTConf with a post. Um, I could look up the section, but it's it's the post uh, method for the operation resource. Uh, okay. I suppose you know it could be replicated through in a new rest comp version as well. Okay, so Andy, why don't you go ahead and add that? And uh, so per if that is the case, then we can probably uh, make that a recommendation for people who want to use more filtering mechanisms. Yes. So you mean the invoke operation mode, uh, Andy, uh, with post? Right, and uh, of course, it doesn't require a protocol change. No, but it needs uh, it. It needs. Um, hmm. Okay, we can look into that later. Uh, then we're at. Uh, this one that is uh, defined in the netconf uh, issue list instead. So I think we're done with with this. This is basically just copying that uh, netconf uh, error handling issue. I think we should discuss it there instead. So let's go over to the netconf list or if anyone has um, like any other suggestion for things that should be in uh, restconf other pain points if so write a new issue for it so we can go can i I was just going to ask a, a broader question here, and this is maybe not the right place. Is at the moment we have two separate protocols, NetConf and RestConf. Uh, is that the right um, split in terms of is the right answer here? We should be doing a new version of RestConf to cover like extensions in just that direction, a separate version, a new version of NetConf. Is that the right answer? So I think maybe that's a question, a sort of meta question that we should also be asking ourselves is uh, do we need both of these? I think the answer is potentially yes that they they use in different places and have different purposes but i do note that we have these two uh two separate protocols to achieve the same sort of thing you mean if we should just deprecate one protocol and continue with one of them i, I guess so or or uh, i think so because i can't see how you can really align these two into something new i don't think that that would make sense but but it's that was just a consideration that I have is there's two protocols here. Uh, is that definitely what the industry wants and needs? 
this it's access to yang data which is finding a lot of applicability so i think uh they were both needed and and one's as intended for more lightweight operations and integrates well with a lot of existing tools and then there's existing netconf with this has you know more serious um uh operations that are harder to use so uh they're they're quite different uh in use i think um and should should both continue do they need to like have exact same functionality i don't i don't know uh, let the you know let the market decide and so but uh i think there's a, a lot more interest in a an, a version of netconf that can support json and seaboard that's like what we're hearing in large capital letters uh, from from customers so <clears throat> not so much uh, problems there's really no one's having any problems with restconf actually it's, it's actually doing quite well on its own based on you know what's what's out there and i see in various drafts people are are using J, uh, json examples with restconf operations and the latest uh, t's uh, yang modules are doing that so not in favor of taking away restconf okay uh, so so one more again it's not uh and i can't remember if i'm correcting this Am I right in thinking, Andy, that RESTConf mandates XML and JSON is optional? Is that correct? And is that still the right way around? If we were to do a new version of RESTConf? I'm not sure that's the case. I think it, it mandates one or the other, and we didn't force XML, but it, uh, that's my memory of it. Uh, that, yeah, that's right, uh, Andy. It's one or the other. And and the popularity of json cannot be understated <laughs> at this point it's like late to the party okay we're yay let's support json yeah great sir so, uh, rob when you started i thought you were also going to ask the question of uh, compatibility between the two protocols if you're going to take up the work of rescont next and that next is the uh, also the understanding that the uh, and the answer is I don't know. So I, th I think it's I think these I think all these questions are worth asking, and the working group should discuss them, have threads on them. Um, I think listening to Andy's um, voice and things because he has a lot of experience in terms of who's deploying what. I think that should weigh quite heavily in terms of what we do here, um, and I think also we should look at um, what whether we want to prioritize trying to update both these at the same time. It would be better for the working group to focus on on NetConf next first and uh, at least you know capture what we want to do with RESTConf, but say if we're going to focus on one of these, NetConf has a higher pressing need to fix it. And I agree with, with Andy that supporting both uh, JSON and CBOR in, in NetConf would be desirable. And there's other things I think could be clarified and cleaned up in NetConf as well that would be helpful. So I don't know whether they need to, they need power, feature parity. Um, I think I think all these things would be good to capture as either issues and and have discussions on them, dis discussion threads on those specific, those specific things. I guess I'll jump in, uh, Q. Um, so in my other life, I'm working with a uh, web services company, and we do a lot of REST JSON type interfaces using Swagger API and JSON schema. It's really quite different, but I got to say it's very inferior to RESTConf and Yang. Um, maybe Yang could be improved in some ways. I, I did actually find some things that JSON schema could do that Yang cannot do, uh, but we could fix that. Um, but just by and large, that whole ecosystem is horrendous in my view having come from everything we've been doing in NetConf and RESTConf working groups, sorry, NetConf and NetMod working groups. Um, so I'm all in favor of trying to maintain parity between the protocols. And honestly, the only thing that's not yet supported is confirmed commit. 
if I, if I, I, if I don't know if anyone knows of anything else that's not supported in ResConf, but confirm commit is the one thing that I'm aware of. And being that close, it seems like it's um, desirable to keep them feature parity. Can't I actually agree with that uh, that uh, feature request because we implement it, so you should put it on the list. And, and, and I agree, we should try to do both protocols and and bring them both up to date. That's that's the point of doing these updates. Is like you get experience for six or ten years, and then you then you update the the standards. And uh, I have found that there's a, a level of detail when you're talking about networking equipment and the whole internet infrastructure that's just way beyond the capabilities of the average you know application programmer and i'm sure the guys at boeing you know feel the same way about us okay that our procedures are just just ad hoc all over the place uh, willy-nilly uh, compared to what you have to do to get an airplane in the air so uh it's all relative and i agree that the networking industry needs Yang, and uh, it's only getting better. Uh, and the Yang models are are really pushing the limits of Yang that I see coming out. Man, they are really complicated. So, uh, you know, and that's what languages are for, to be used. So, so, so it's a good thing, actually, that the, the compilers handle it and everything's working. Okay, uh, so first should we move now to the netconf list? Yes, let's start at the bottom. Copy config on factory default data store. So Rod, uh, Rob, you seem to be uh, read up on the issue maybe? I think uh, Jürgen's comment is also relevant here, right? He's saying, why just factory default? Hmm. Go ahead, Andy. Um, sorry, I'm really confused. Isn't this a read-only data store? What? Why would a vendor let you overwrite the read-only um, factory default? Uh, I'm not getting that. Maybe the intention was to copy the factory default into another data store, like startup? I don't know. I think the I have to look it up, but the, there's already RFC on the factory default data store, and I think it already supports copying it to and from uh, to other places. This one is from 2019. Yes, so Sorry, suggestions. Yeah. So I, I was just thinking, I don't know what the, I don't know what the issue is here that we're trying to solve. So it sounds like the suggestion we update copy config to add in a new data store operation. And then my comment there was, why don't we uh, just um, uh, use copy data instead? I mean, I, so I think so. I think a meta question here is: if we update a new version of create a new version of netconf, is do we deprecate or obsolete uh, some of the operations so we don't have copy config and we force it using copy data, for example? Or do we deprecate the old ones and carry them on? So I think that's another question is related. So, so maybe uh, we need a use case for this. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, I think we should at least add uh, or try to understand what is the use case. Yeah, and Ken Wu, who filed this case, is not here. Uh, no. Again, the China friendly time. But I note that this issue was filed in March of 2019, about two mm. weeks after NMDA was published. So why didn't he choose copy data like Robert is suggesting? It's unknown to me. So let's uh, add this and continue. So support for binary encoding. Do we need to have a large discussion about this? No, I think we just know we want to do this. So. Uh, needs. Okay. So confirmed, confirmed commit procedure needs clarification if persist parameter is used. Uh, Andy might be able to clarify or take the wheel. Uh, let me find it on Um, I think the, the issue was persisting after a reboot, or, or this may be uh, uh, already in the RFC and, and doesn't need any uh, changes. Certainly wouldn't need a, a protocol version. Um, yeah, this, this is really old. Okay, so it was like from four years ago. It could be that we've already clarified this as as well but i i think it, uh, the issue was after a reboot does it need to to revert and and it does so, so i think the re this is uh just my misunderstanding at the time it, it this is a non-issue that you, it does revert after a uh, uh it reverts so that means that the persist is over and it doesn't carry through. So I think that's what the customer was asking about is, is can this persist keep going even if the server reboots? So it would sounds like a, a would be a, a, a change in behavior from a must. To, to, so that is a protocol change. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't understand. What yeah, this is kind of it. A, a deep knit is is like what happens to a confirmed commit if the server reboots you're you're you've done a, a, com, a commit with the per, persist but you haven't done the second one to confirm it and so and when you come back i think the rfc says your your confirmed commit is over and it reverts back to uh, as if the confirm commit failed, it's treated as a failure, and I think that's what the the clarification is. Is I'm not sure it really says all that in the RFC. Is it stated on list maybe in some discussion? Uh, I, yeah, so I, I think this like needs a further examination to to see if. if this this is deep in the weeds of the implementation of, of confirm commit, but it is used. Uh, confirm commit is used, and mm -hmm. people want it to work the same, I guess, on all servers. That sounds like reasonable crest. Yeah, just quickly, I, I agree. More examination. The thing is about uh, commit confirm. I mean, the whole reason for this is because while your client pushes an update to the server, 
it could lose its connectivity to the server. Like, for instance, it's reconfiguring the VPN over which it is connecting to the server, right? So it loses the connectivity, and then later on it comes back up and it can get reconnected and then do the issue the confirming commit. Now, from the client's perspective, if the server rebooted or not, it doesn't know. It, it is, it, you know, the server comes back up and it can get connected again and it's going to try to issue the confirming commit. So I guess we need to consider it from the client's perspective as well. Uh, what does it mean if the server reboots? Okay. Continuing. Uh, with this commit or zero right should accept vendor specific information. Today it does not. The XML schema for netconf does not support it, as far as I understood. Um, uh, existing tag seems to indicate that it needs a new protocol version. Um, Go ahead, Jan. Yeah, I guess it was me that said that it was likely breaking many new clients. Uh, I think this is a good idea. We should do this. We have come up and had a discussion on the list several times about can we return more information about you know, for we did together with OK or together with something else? And I think people are already doing this in some cases, but only when it's been negotiated in some way with the server. And there's some extra capability that announces to the server that the client will understand this anyway. But it's sort of breaking the XSD. But it's a good thing to do. Um, I, I was just going to say it's a uh, uh, it's fundamental to to netconf that you know in the XSD it says you can return okay you, or you can return data or you can return uh, RPC error and and this is wrapped up in the whole issue of of that XSD problem plus the RPC warnings, where to me this is just there's no special case here. You want to add warnings uh, to to uh, to an OK, uh, then that would require a protocol change, but it'd be worth doing, and it could cover a lot. Uh, you know, any kind of data that the vendor would want to return, you, you could do that. And I fully support warnings. I don't think uh, it was a good idea to leave out an error tag which permitted the use of warnings. It's a major oversight uh, in, in 6241. So so th this is uh, should be done and, and maybe, you know, consider the larger issue of, of of just returning stuff along with OK. And also data. We can't even return it in within an error right now because there's no error tag that allows it, which is should be fixed. OK. Is there more discussion or should we carry on? Let's carry on. Uh, we are here. Clarify meaning of default operation replace in edit config. Uh, Perhaps you can present, Rob, the issue. 
Uh, I'll need to read it first. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, effectively, I, I think. Um, so I guess for me, in the net comp RFC in general, it's sort of. Um, I'm not sure how closely bound it is to Yang. So and again, I don't know if we have issues to track this, but the sort of cleaning up the RFC to to make it definitely tightly bound to Yang, and also to take the bits that are like protocol specific to net comp and uh, the stuff that aren't isn't uh well the other way around as well just clean up the two rfc thing makes sense so in this particular one i was talking about the way that you handle like the replace operations and the other operations things like that i don't think they are necessarily um as clearly specified as could be and actually you had to dig around in various places in the different rfcs i think to get the exact behavior you want and so i think that that's something that potentially could be more could be better clarified here. So again, I don't think it's a change in behavior. I think it's just, you know, we should, if we're going to update these protocol specs, we should say, look, what changes can we make to make these specifications clearer? Okay, and as Rob has, I think, already added, there's a clarification label attached to it. So maybe that should suffice for what we want to do with the issue. Uh, yes, but wouldn't it? Uh, so what would the action be then? Like uh, clarifying, Rata is not possible, so uh, clarifying RFC. So I, I think it just means that when you produce, when we produce a new version of the RFC, these issues that are like clarifications, we look through to see if it's something where we want to just tweak the text to make it clearer what the behavior is. So I'm not, I don't think I disagree with Andy in terms of what he's saying the existing behavior is documented as. It just, um, I'm saying that other people who read this found it unclear. Hmm. And I can't remember this one. One came up recently again where uh other people other colleagues were reading the rfcs and they came up with different behavior for things as to versus what the rfcs meant and so these those things i think when they come up they're worth highlighting the saying that people are, are misreading this so we should get that clarified it's, i i agree it's uh this this specific behavior which is intentional that copy config uh will delete um, nodes that aren't there and it, it it's, it is confusing but it's done intentionally so it could could use new text i guess but not to change how it works but it is possible to get this wrong i've seen it uh several times this this actual issue has come up several times of someone asking why isn't it work the same way and so, so you, so you are correct. It must be confusing. Okay, next, uh, use of quick as transport. Um, the good news on that is there's supposed to be, there is a draft that was written but not presented in the network working group. Um, so there's some interest the only question now is whether uh, who, whether the authors are willing to take up on it. And as Rob points out, we need to understand the benefits, which we do kind of um, with multiple streams. Hmm. Uh, only question again, uh, which we kind of answered is whether we need a new protocol for it or not. Shouldn't this be a Rust Conf issue? 
Is, uh, we're, in the, we're in the Metcalf issue tracker, are we not? This is uh, for you can... rest, rest comp, and this is for net comp. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can use it as a replacement t for TCP, basically, Kent. Uh, quick directly without yeah. without any HTTP context. Okay. So similar answer. For, I don't know. I haven't read this draft. Uh, I don't know how it rolls things. But for uh, as I look up here, uh, for RESTConf, we said that it needs next for for streams. Otherwise, it's backwards compatible. So should we say the same thing here? Oops. I would imagine so. But but also to be clear is unless we're going to change the protocol to uh, make use of those streams in some way, I don't see that quick will give you much of any value over just using TLS. So that so that's the thing is that we could do this, but it's got to have a there's got to be a reason to do it. And so I think it comes down to is uh, would we have optional support for streams in some way that that could use this? Because uh, mm. without that, there's no benefit. Uh, but again, I'm not sure we'd want to get rid of support for TLS uh, over TCP. I suppose with the side, subscribe subscription, uh, even with NetConf, it'd be possible to have a second stream for the subscriptions. Yes, and well, I think you uh, yes, and and you get also even more benefit if each of your subscriptions uh, that you make potentially comes back on a different stream if you want that behavior. And so if you had a particular stream that, you know, was flooding or doing too much, sending too much data and getting back pressured, you have the ability for the other stream data to come through. So in terms of flow control and telemetry, doing stuff over quick looks at a, like a surface layer to be quite attractive. But you have to, there needs to be some of the changes, I think, to, uh, even just configuration changes or changes to the like Yang push to enable those other thoughts or subscribe notifications, maybe. Yep. Let's carry on. Oh, that was the last one on that page. Cleanup of the spec relative to Yang XML. And this was the one I was talking about earlier. Um, so effectively, the Yang, you know, the Yang spec has all these XML examples in there. Um, It'd be nice if we actually had an, a set, probably a separate RFC documenting the XML encoding of Yang in the same way that we have the one for JSON. Um, so that would be nice to do, whether there's the willingness and effort to do it. It's just like this meta comment is that we could go to some effort here if there was the energy to clean up these specs uh, so that they are better structured longer term uh, for evolution and readability. This is not a new idea. This has been discussed, you know, mm. five years ago as well. That is correct. And I think uh, the likely scenario, uh, or what, what would actually play out is that it happens along with the Yang Next work. Well, there's two steps, right? I mean, the net mod working group could do Yang next and factor out the netconf XML bits from it and just allow Yang to define the syntax and semantics there. But separately, the netconf working group could move ahead today, uh, not even waiting for net mod to do anything and try to define the equivalent of 79.51 for XML. True. Um, hi, I, th I think uh, 
Martin has brought up several times the issue that ripping out all of the XML examples and everything from from NetConf would make it harder to implement. People really find it useful to have the examples. So going to another document to see how a, a NetConf operation works. Um, I don't know if that would work, but I, I, maybe you're just talking about moving the normative text to another RFC and then referencing it here. That that maybe that's what, yes. That's what you mean? Okay. Yeah. The the, the the plan would still keep the is not to rip the examples out, but be to move the normative text somewhere else. Okay. Hopefully the examples stay in the same RFC as the operations. Uh, yes. This one. Okay. Okay. Good. So no more action here in this comment sums it up. Yes, I uh, except the, the part about actual the cleanup work. Uh, so what should we jot down then? Hmm. So personally, I, th I mean, this is my view. I think this is worth doing, but there is a there's quite a high cost to this. There's a higher cost to doing this than many other things because it's talking about like restructuring the documents. Um, but I think it would help longer term in terms of maintenance. So, so I see value here, but it, it requires people to commit to doing it. So is this a fair interpretation? Comment on the screen. Take that as a yes then. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, thanks. Um, so next cleanup, hello capability and version negotiation. And I would say there might be a few of these. If we check this one, uh, hello and version negotiation. Um, and um, maybe this one, capability negotiation between client and server. Uh, maybe one more, I don't remember. Maybe the flexible encoding, I don't remember. But uh, some of them are related at least, I think. So cleanup of hello message capability and consider version negotiation. So I take it that this is to try to remove the redundancy that's occurring now because Yang library, uh, the overlap with the Yang library. And uh, so, you know, it definitely is a need next type item because we're talking about changing the protocol to whittle down um, the hello message so that it doesn't have any redundancy to it. Go ahead, yeah. And I think this is one of those things that we already fixed with something called Yang 1.1. Yang 1.1 modules aren't listed in Hello. So it's just a matter of getting rid of the Yang 1.0 modules out there. True. So it might just be a question of actual removal of the Hello text in the RFC. OK. 
Okay, so, so this is Yang 1.1. Uh, so the text, I guess, uh, per could be that um, I clean out the hello text from the RFC. I remove the text referring to hello from the RFC. Go ahead. Yeah. I still don't understand what you mean by that. So we already have RFC text. And when you say clean up from the RFC, I'm not sure if you, Shen, you're talking about if that's the Yang or uh, NetConf. I'm referring to NetConf, but maybe it's. Isn't that text there that is. Um, that might need to be removed? But do you want to change netconf? I mean, the existing netconf. I mean, it's one thing of making a new version of netconf, like 1.2 or something. And there you can do that. But the existing versions of netconf and Yang, I suppose, have to behave the way they do, don't they? Right. So what I guess I'm saying is, uh, yeah, then the next version of netconf uh, would, uh, the draft or the RFC would, probably remove any reference to the hello. All right, so netconf 1.2 would do the same things as already done in Yang 1.1 or something, say that you go to Yang library. That is correct. I think, I think it's maybe difficult to get the netconf, new netconf RFC to talk about Yang modules, but, but the hour, oh, sure. Um, yeah, I, this is not backward compatible, and, and we certainly cannot take away the hello message is, is needed. And you don't know if the other peer supports uh, base 1.2 before you send your hello. This is a fundamental part of the protocol that is already works. In, and Yang 1.0 will just go away by itself. and. And it's already taken care of. It's the text is actually in seventy nine fifty. It was never in uh, sixty two forty one. So it's it has to do with uh, the, what was called the module capability, and it's just another URI to NetConf. Uh, there's it's just a list of URIs in the hello, and, and that's all NetConf cares about. Uh, so no changes needed in NetConf. It's it's uh, already taken care of in 7950, section 564, I believe. Okay. I think oh. I think we can skip 13 because it was a NACM next and we don't have a list for NACM next, but there's no changes in NetConf. This is optimizing NACM and don't need to waste time on it. Um, 13. Uh, uh, where is uh, NACM next? Actually, before that, we do have the JSON encoding in yeah, that. So, so that as well. It's taking me. Yes, so. Uh, from well, the there are a bunch of tickets uh, about different encodings. Can we tie them together? Yes. Uh, I can try to fix that after. Um, can 
do a new uh, tag called encoding or label and use that one. No. Like that. I'll fix the other encodings afterwards. It's mentioned Seaboard, but I guess that's the, uh, maybe the binary encoding um, on the page two here, the other page. So NACM, uh, uh, white, uh, yes. So, so was there a NACM next? Uh, uh, tracker or, or there is issue? there's not an, an Akam next tracker so we should be able to do the work here if needed I mean it will still be in the netconf group right within our charter um NACM is one of those modules that you know wh wh which group does it belong into the you know the but I guess whichever I I work uh, NACM published it originally right so it makes sense that NACM would publish an update. Uh, I would suggest just keep it here till we have actually created a NACM next. Okay. Is there some label with needs action or something? No, okay. Keep it like this. Mac, um, uh, private candidate data stores. Uh, I think we could just close this since the work is ongoing. Agree. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Is it like this? Draft JTF netcom precan, I think. So now we're here. Stop on error and continue on error should be optional. Floor is free. Go ahead, yeah. I th think Balash has a good idea. I, I also see this is it could, it could well be optional, but it would require a new protocol, obviously, if we do that. Okay. Carrying on. Uh, make lock and op unlock optional. Perhaps a similar conclusion as the last one. Go ahead, Ian. Yeah, similar in that it needs next, but I hear I'm a little bit less uh, interested. I think we are moving more towards a lockless world than having more interesting lock modes or something. But it would definitely require a new protocol. OK. 
Okay, carrying on. It's, sorry, just on that last one, it, it's already optional to use. Is, is the question or the request to make it optional to implement? I believe so. Gotcha. So extend the notification header to support Yang XPath and version. Uh, I think isn't at least the version is ongoing work. Ah, uh, Yang version. But the notification version is an ongoing draft, right? I don't know if it's adopted though. So uh, at least the second one is work that is currently ongoing. Hmm. The first one, I don't know. So um, we leave it with a question for uh, Thomas Groff to answer. The where there was a clarification. Uh, so Alex posts in the chat window that um, the, uh, the even the expat is a work in progress. So we can close the issue. Okay. And I believe same is the case for the next issue. Yeah, I think so as well. We're here, right? Fully define the merge operation. Uh, Kent, perhaps you can say a few words. Sorry, can you scroll down a little bit? Your screen's hiding the top. Sorry. Or so I can see the top. Uh -huh. Oh my, <laughs> I haven't looked at this forever. Can you scroll down now a little bit? So I'm trying to speed read it all. Uh, okay, having to do with leaf lists and bits. So, I mean, I guess it's the text. If uh, the parts I copy paste, then it just need to be clarified, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, the, I mean, we, I'm, if common, if implementations are commonly combining and not replacing, then we should document that as the solution or what was intended.
Yeah, I agree. I think we should probably clarify. So it would be just updated text. Uh, but could that be part of uh, an errata? Or is it out of scope for um? Uh, you you can file an errata. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd verify it's errata. As in, I think that it's probably too ambiguous to mm. fix. Uh, certainly, the bottom bits. I think to me is is not. I'm not sure that's intuitive to me that you would merge the two values of two leaves together depending on their type the one for leaf lists i think is intuitive but the one for bits seems a bit odd to me hmm. so then we label it as need next as well right no i don't think so we're, we're just talking about clarifying the existing protocols so where would it be clarified? Oh, as you're saying, in I mean, a document, be, yeah, it could be in next, but uh, I mean, uh, uh, perhaps it is an errata or hold for documentation or something like that. But um, and we may want to split these out, having a separate leaf list, one for leaf list and a different one for bits, so we can discuss them. I don't have any personal opinion about this, you know, if it's intuitive or not. I don't have that sense. I'm really just interested in capturing what it is that is commonly implemented. Andy, can you say about Yuma Pro what it does when merging leafless and bits? Um, well, it certainly doesn't mix uh, bits. Bits is just one leaf, but each in if you're uh, talking about leaf lists, then it only affects the the instances that that uh, are there. So, and, and it's not very useful, right? You, you you can't change the value of a leaf list because it, its value is the key, in a sense. That's the one area where we heard a lot of comments. People would like to be able to handle leaf list as a as a um, complete thing. Uh, and and not the individual instances, um, but uh, it's not supposed to be um, uh, you know bits is not supposed to be this, the same as treated the same as as leaf list. I think the operations could uh, use some clarification. Ac actually, getting a uh, a few customers really focusing on this lately. They they'd like consistent behavior everywhere imagine that and they're getting pretty demanding but it's 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 uh an important thing to make yang better than everything else is is to have this uh guidelines and consistent behavior of what's the difference between a merge and a replace and uh, i guess this needs clarification i don't know if there's any changes but um examples on on what a server is supposed to do maybe um are needed So how about um, per week pilot us to routers and market for, uh, um, I guess, for a document update and then go from there. So I also wanted to, as far as entering the comment, uh, do a time check. So we have, we have eight minutes left. Um, we certainly won't be able to finish all the issues. So one is we do would need at least one more meeting to kind of finish going through all the items, uh, which we'll try to schedule, I guess, in January. Uh, but separately also, I think we have the question, question of um, interest level and who wants to take on the work. So we'll try to, uh, I guess, address that in the next meeting is that my understanding Kent and Burr? yeah 
discussion. Yes, it makes sense that we would schedule an interim uh, for January. I think that's a good agenda for the, uh, that meeting as well. Okay. NetMod will also be having an interim in January as well as IV. So we'll have a, f a couple competing interims to deal with. Okay. Um, I, I will try to update uh, on the issues list if I had any comments rather than slowing up the meeting. So, so I think everyone should go through the issues list and update with notes if, if you make it, think it'll make it go faster. I think the big discussion is is how to do uh, what I really want, which is uh, flexible message encoding, just like HTTP. So, so uh, that's at the message level, not at the session level, like we did in the first proposal. But it it's would be a, a huge win. To, to support JSON and and Cbor, I think everyone is in agreement. It's just how to do it. Maybe is uh, where we, there's some work to be done. Andy, do you want to file a separate issue for that? How do you want to track that? Mahesh, there's already an issue for uh, encodings. In fact, I think there's two issues for encodings. Right, but I think what uh, Andy is kind of broadening that thing from just encoding to a flexible message format, right? I mean, I, he made a reference to HTTP, so I'm assuming media types where you know the client can uh, specify the accept format. I see. Um, but you know, going back to a comment that Rob made earlier, uh, what is our true intention here in terms of maintaining protocols going forward? Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'll say something outlandish, which is that I wouldn't be surprised, or it wouldn't, it would be uh, unsurprising to me if we focused on RESTConf going forward. Well, I, I don't know. There's a, still a lot of uses of NetConf, and there's the content type and the accept uh, mechanisms are, are really too complicated, but uh, I have a proposal how to do this. And if you look at co-app content type, mm -hmm. as, as, as uh, um, I, I don't want to, ex you know, totally change the protocol, but the, the ability to say, I'm using this this media type, and I want uh, JSON back, or I want Cbor. There's already a way to do it for Yang Push. Yang Push, you just specify the encoding, and magically uh, you violate the the protocol and send what they ask for. So, but so, but it's not there for like large RPC replies, um, which is not as important. So. Uh, I, you know, can understand if we don't go that direction, but uh, the same kind of flexibility that's already in RESTConf is, uh, would be good for NetConf. Okay. Uh, thanks, Andy, for that suggestion and also for the suggestion to, that Andy mentioned for everyone else is go ahead and feel free to update the issues section with your opinion or suggestions on what you want to do next with either an existing or a new issue. Any other question or comments before we close the meeting? Uh, just a quick comment. I apologize to the working group for not getting here on time. I meant to, but for some reason, the ITF secretary's email to me, with the interim uh, meeting invite didn't come through, and uh, so <laughs> if it's not on my calendar, I don't know it exists. And <laughs> sorry about that. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, and we will meet in the new year. Until then, happy holidays. Bye. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Well done. Bye.